Okay, for the first inbox kit review, first look, we're gonna use the 172nd scale Airfix de Havilland DH82 Tiger Moth. It's a biplane trainer used by the British during World War II. First flew in the 30s and they retired it in the 1950s, 1959 if I remember. So this is one of the new tool Airfix kits. You can tell because it has the CAD renderings on the side as opposed to just drawings like the older kits. So open it up. I haven't looked at this yet. I just picked it up today for about $9. Start with the instructions. Won't go too much into them simply because if you're familiar with Airfix kits, my guess is, like all of them, this one's going to be similar. Multilingual. You open it. No parts layout, but various instructions. Sort of colored, showing you what you're supposed to work on. And Looks like it's not too involved of a kit. Hopefully, as it's a biplane, they have a rigging diagram. That's always nice. I do like how Airfix puts color for the parts that they show in place in the previous steps so that you can kind of check and see that you've done it right. And we do have a rigging diagram, which is always nice. Fits with Easy Line. I've never built a 72nd scale biplane, so I'm a little bit intimidated by the rigging. So, Typical of Airfix, we have a bag sealed with heat. Just cut that open. First sprue, here's to be the upper wing, tail plane, click the engine intake and front cowling, exhaust pipe, nicely molded, nothing looks warped. We've got some struts and the propeller. Second one looks like it has the fuselage and the tail, well, the horizontal stabilizers. Again, nicely molded, two side interior detail. Looks like you've got notches so you can cut apart the doors if you want to close those open. Third, we have the, probably the lower wing because that had the higher dihedral than the upper wing. You can kind of see it there, the way it bends up. And it looks like we have seats and two pilot figures nice. Um, it doesn't look like Airfix gives you any harness to put in the plane. A separately bagged clear sprue with both the windscreens. Now the decals. Airfix's new tool kits have really nice decals. Looks like we've got each instrument panel, which is nice, and the various markings for the aircraft. This one, as you can see on the back, which is where Airfix puts their markings instructions, it's a yellow overall with the um, camouflage upper wings. Not a big fan of yellow paint. That's actually why I bought this. I want to experiment with some undercolors and see if I can do some tonal variation in there. And this one is a training squadron in England in 1940. All right, now that we've looked at what the basic kit is, we're going to go ahead and cut a couple parts off the sprue. Once again, I just want to stress the fabric detail on this. It's kind of hard to get the camera to pick up on it. But you've got some nice rib detail, nice surface textures, not overdone like some of the Airfix kits that um, have a little bit of the heavy panel lines and kind of the uh, overdone surface detail that we've seen. So I always use sprue cutters. I didn't used to always use sprue cutters. Um, I wasn't sure they were necessary. Really highly recommend them. I just have the Tamiya ones. They were fairly cheap off the Tamiya website. So we're gonna check the main fit on these main components here, just to kind of see what we're working with. If they don't fit, that's obviously gonna be a big problem. Um, I always like to te test fit all my kits. It's one of the ways I decide what I build next. Airfix has provided locating pins and holes. Always appreciate that. Some other manufacturers that I really love don't do that, and it gets really frustrating. So, it looks like the fuselage halves go together nicely. Almost a press fit there. And we're reminded of how small biplanes really are in 70 second scale. So the fuselage looks good. Let's get that bottom wing. Again, Airfix did a good job not overdoing it with the surface detail here, especially when it comes to the rib tape and the fabric effect of being stretched over the ribs. I'm gonna cut these kind of away from the leading edges a little bit just because I prefer to clean them up by um, something a little bit less damaging than sprue cutters should I mess up. 
it's easier to fix that way. So we have the lower wings. Again, notice the dihedral on that. Okay, we'll move on and take the upper wing free. Again, just want to take this and kind of make sure that it all fits together. Um, I probably shouldn't do that until I'm actually ready to build because I'll get excited about a kit and when it doesn't fit, kind of just put it away and then never work on it. We'll go ahead and tape the fuselage together just to kind of hold it in place and test the main fit of the lower wing. So we probably have some stuff to add there. Um, Lockup isn't very nice right now, but I'm not gonna judge that because I haven't even looked at the directions more thoroughly than what you've seen on this video. And as you can see, it looks like we're going to have a very small aircraft. One of the things in taking a closer look at the parts that I really appreciate is that on the wing struts right here, you see that we've got these pieces of plastic in between the two struts. Those actually won't be there on the finished product. Those are actually just to help align the kit so that you maintain the proper upper and lower wing alignment. Um, generally with a biplane, I would use a jig. I don't have a jig for 70 second scale because I never thought I'd build a biplane in this scale. So I'm actually gonna try that out and see how it works when I build the kit. And all in all, it looks like things are gonna fit well. I'm just gonna grab the, grab the engine cowling off the sprue here. Again, I'm gonna cut these sprue tabs a little bit farther away than I normally do just because I don't want to damage that on such a prominent part. And it looks like it fits very well. So all in all, I'm actually really looking forward to building this kit. The small size with rigging does intimidate me a little bit, but it's always fun to step outside of your comfort zone. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, this is definitely the first one. You can probably tell that. Look forward to doing some more and getting them a little bit more refined. Thanks again for watching.